people's journeys and stories through life and sports or whatever they had going on, you know, to get where they're at today. But today we're going to talk about some uh, some realities that people go through and, you know, you don't think much about, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. And uh, me and Nick, we saw this post. It was called 10 Painful Truths. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. You know, it's a pretty uh, popular post. I see it a lot on social media. But after reading the 10, I really thought, like, damn, this is something I could talk with, uh, with like, my guys and yeah. really see, like, three different perspectives. Yeah on life and how how these have affected us yeah because i mean points one through ten like they could have affected me a complete 180 on how it affected you absolutely and you you know Mm -hmm. so this shows that you know obviously everyone's going through their own stuff and has their own journey and has their own battles and because all this stuff that you're going through this is part of your journey yeah and uh this is something I really wanted to touch on, especially with you two. You know what I mean? Great energy. 100%. Yeah, you know, great, uh, just great people to have on. Yeah. And this yeah. is going to be a, this is going to be a good one, man. Now, really quick. Um, what, what exactly, like, what do you think, like, what do these 10 painful truths without me looking at it? Like, what, what are they about? Like, what is that, the painful truth? Like, what is that? So the painful truths are just, I feel like it's something that people go their everyday lives with like you know and and these things happen yeah and and you don't think about them they're just kind of part of life Mm -hmm. and they happen and but they're they're truths that are inevitable yeah and you know what i mean you don't know how important these play a role in your life right and you let life you know slip up on you and then there's these things bam these points where painful truths you know what i mean like i was even speaking to albert before this he's like damn like they're coming at me with these because yeah these are relatable topics, man, that I feel like if you are aware of some of these, I don't know. It could it could change your life. It could change your day-to-day life. Okay, it I like that. It could make you focus on other things yeah. and, and really realize the the importance of just life in general, man, and, yeah. and everything An awareness. that comes with it. Yeah. I, liked, I like to say a lot, um, sometimes the best way to solve a problem is to know that there is a problem, you know, is mm, to have so that have that awareness uh because if i don't know that something's going on what 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 is there to attack you know so uh without me looking at it i would assume that that's what these are about i I didn't i didn't look at that you sent me them and i kind of looked at it but like bro i'm in the moment guy i'm glad i'm glad i was like i I want i I want i sent this shit to albert i looked at it man 10 10 minutes ago yeah okay i'm glad i'm glad to get into them let's do it yeah let's uh let's start with number one and um for everyone watching we'll uh we're gonna drop it right below yeah so you know what i mean you guys could have your perspective on it and what it means to you yeah uh number one is the average human life is relatively short say that again the average human life is relatively short and i mean for me like i could attest to that a hundred percent you know yeah. what i mean where yeah. it's like 12 years in in wow. my life you know i lost my mom yeah so losing losing someone that close to you makes you realize at 12 years old i wasn't even a teenager yet life is short bro yeah. that that time that i had with her like that snap of the finger and it's like you can't get it back so yeah touch on what what that means to you guys man and and how does that make you feel and because you don't think about it man we, we've been here 23 23 23, 23. 23. we're all yeah. 23 yeah I've been here 23 years mm-hmm. as it does feel like a long time how short does it also feel? It felt like it was like a day. I'm not going to lie to you. It feels like one day of like, I guess every hour has been like a year. And yeah. it's just like that. Like sh- good things have happened where I've accomplished some things and bad things have happened where there's heartbreak, girls and this, that, and the third. But it's, uh, I can't believe it really went that fast. I really can't believe it. It's crazy. It's crazy if you think about like we've been here for 23 years. That's a long ass time. But when you th- when you think about it, when you kind of compact it, mm-hmm. kind of like we were just talking about, there's been heartbreak, there's been loss, there's been tragedy, there's been moments of great accomplishment. There's been moments you're standing on top of the fucking mountain. Look look at me. And right now, cuz we're in this moment, it's like it's that that's hard to to even see. Though so it's it feels like quick. Um and that's why I think that this is crazy that this is coming up because life is short. 
even if you have 100, 100 years, 200, right now in this moment, my past feels short. Um, so even if it is like 200 years, that's right now I'm not thinking about my past 23 years. I'm just here today. So one of the craziest things about that is that it's what I just talked about in my last podcast is people will go like it, even if so life is short, right? Mm-hmm. Like we know that and now even if you make it to 100 years, that's still short. But some people like like you, you lost your mom when you were 12 and and, and, and some people like my my aunt, she had a miscarriage uh, or well, the baby was born uh, dead. Really? Yeah, wow. the baby was born still. dead. So like how short is that? You know, like they didn't even have a day a day to walk. You know, um, and uh, you think about that, and and it's sad because people misuse their time, um, and they're never. What I realized is it's a, being present is the best thing in the entire world. Absolutely. Because if you can be present for a hundred years, that's a long time. Yeah. You can, if you're present for for an hour, that's a long time. Mm-hmm. If you're really sitting here in this room listening to you feeling my body that's great and that's that's a that's a beautiful way to live but we live in this this forward rush state where we're just living life so people gun not only is life short people also just gun through their lives so that's like that that's cool that we get to talk about that and maybe if anyone's listening you know i I would i would take um i would take inventory of of where you're at in your life and and how in a rush are you and and maybe uh to get the most out of it spend more time in the present moment yeah absolutely man the uh the moments we take for granted are you know what i mean there's so many of them yeah where you don't realize like all right this is the last time i'm gonna do this or this is you know what i mean like, you don't think about it that, like uh-huh. think about juco think about your last foot like that was the last snap you were gonna take at football and and you don't notice it and then you grind it for all these years yeah even you with yeah, yeah. basketball and football and playing like you never know when your last snap was gonna be your last your last official yeah. AAU game or yeah. high school game. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it comes and goes. Yeah. But uh, th- those are just little chapters in our life. But think about it. We're here for 20 years, man. We've been here for 23 years so far. Yeah. And it, it feels like, like you said, like it feels like it was yesterday. You can remember when we were 12 and we were all in middle school together playing yeah. football. Crazy. B team. Yeah, yeah. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, man. Bro, for real. You you don't understand how short life really is, man. Like you said, even 80 to 100 years. Man, it's nothing compared to the scale of, of Earth and, yeah. and life. And, it's and like what, 13. what's It's like 13.8 billion years or something like that. It's been around. Bro, but, it, it's... Put it this way as well. You could live, like, say you live 100 years or so. You could live 100 years and still not have really lived. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, you could just be strolling by and yeah. just going through the motions, not really... Like taking in everything. And that's and what majority of people do, bro. Yeah, and and that that's what the saying, you know, they always say like, I wish I could go back and have the same mindset I have now on what I, you know, what I mean, I wish I knew yeah. what I know now right. back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like we kind of know that now, right? We have the awareness of that. Whatever that regret is that people have when they're eighty years old, of or seventy or sixty, of I wish I can go back. We have that now. Let's take advantage of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Bro, I couldn't agree more because Boy. think about think about it. Imagine imagine you had your 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 brain right now at 12, 13. Oh. Think about how successful you feel like you would be or, oh or how God. much Goodness. how much bigger strides you could have taken yeah towards what you wanted to do. And obviously at 12, 13, you have no idea what you want to do. Right. Mm. But if you had the brain now, it's crazy. Wisdom. Yeah. But that, that's 11 years down the road. Yeah. So now imagine where our brains are at when we're 34. Another 11 years. Yeah. Damn, oh, I, was a, I was a dumbass 23-year-old. <laughs> you know? You're not lying. Right. Like we think, bro, I think that like we're doing the right things. And I, and we're going to look back and be like, what were we? Like, what the f- <laughs> What were we doing, you know? Yeah. But... Hopefully yeah, I'm not like living in Hawaii and I have like a like a, a ro- like I just wear a robe and long hair. And <laughs> <laughs> I can see that doing. I can see like me living off the land, you know. I can see that as well. <laughs> I'm out all the way to here. <laughs> oh, cool. But yeah, uh, life life is definitely short, man, and take advantage of it while we're here and Absolutely, make the most bro. of it. Make the most of every moment. Yeah. That's the biggest thing I would get out of this one, out yeah. of this truth, you know, because life is something that. You only get to live once. Yeah. And let's make the most of it for all of us, you know, and everyone watching, man, 
it, it's a cliche saying. You know what I mean? Life is short. You know what I mean? We're I love cliche for, sayings, bro. But, but they're so true all the time. Yeah. They're oh, they're, that's that's like that's what's. I'm tired of like that's corny. That's cliche. Like, dude, like that's good. That's kick that in. Yeah. You know, it's everything. corny because it relates to everyone. Yeah. Exactly. And then everyone doesn't like to be in that same bubble. But at, at the end of the day, we're all humans. We're all here on the same earth, man, and we're all. F- we're all we're all facing a clock, you know what I mean? Yeah. Eventually that shit's gonna run out. Yeah. And we're all facing that clock. So yeah. while we're here, in the short time that we have, let's do exactly what we want to do as as people and humans and whatever. Family members, husbands, wives, kids, nephews, yeah. you gotta let's do it. Let's enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Let's be here. Let's have have a good time, baby. Love it. Let me ask good you man. a question. Do you feel like fear pays a, plays a big part in why people feel like they can't really live their lives? 100%. percent the biggest part. And, and, and that, I'm glad you say that because yeah. that jumps right into number two. That's Let's go. funny you said that. I love that. So number two, you only ever live the life you create for yourself. And it goes hand in hand with what he said. Wow. People are afraid to chase chase their dreams, chase what they want to do because they're scared of failure. They're yeah. scared of what if this doesn't work? What if I waste my time? Yeah. And I feel like the entire time while you're chasing those dreams or those moments or those goals, you become who you are. And like this says, you only ever live the life you create for yourself. No one's going to do it for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people could get, get born into a family, the Kardashians. Right. Mm. You know what I mean? Look at the two younger sisters, mm-hmm. Kylie and Kendall. You get born into that, but think about it. They created a path for themselves. The makeup, the yeah. modeling, yeah. The, the Instagram, yeah. the life they live. You know what I mean? They're living in the moment. So they're taking advantage of Instagram, Twitter, yeah, social they're doing media. Great. Doing really so great, you, at the end of the day, you still have to create for yourself and yeah. create a path, create your own yeah. uh, identity as yeah. a person to to you know accomplish anything but like you said fear plays in a huge role in that because man being if you're scared yeah to to really take that next step it could hinder your entire progress as a human and next thing you know from 23 you're 33 quick and then it goes like that yeah like we said life is short so all these kind of go hand to hand with each other man so yeah talk on that like living the life you know i mean you only live a life that create for yourself yeah i i actually just posted on my instagram uh last week uh a post i think it was by thoreau um and it was like every man has the ability to elevate his life through conscious effort Mm. and i was like so basically like what that means is like um we all have the power to make our life to like not only control our lives but to build our lives the way that we want to build it you get to choose what job you have, or in, in America at least, and you get to choose what job you have. You get to choose what friends you have. You get to choose what what relationship you want to be in. You get to choose what sports team to. So the the entire life is completely. Um, we have choice over over this thing, and there are, I do believe God plays has his destiny role, um, but man, it's like that statement is so powerful because you could elevate your life through conscious effort. So like. If your life is bad at any moment, you could make it better. And don't get me wrong. Some people's lives are really, really, really shitty. But that quote, every man, not some men, you know what I'm saying? Like even if even if, even if, if some people start from 1% and others start at 40%, from 1, you can still get to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 12, 12 to, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I think that, that that's... People forget they in in our culture. Um, number one, everything's so damn expensive. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we live in New York and Long Island. Yeah, bro, we live in the most expensive place, one of the most expensive places in the world, right? Yeah, yeah. And and and, and the um, I would say that that it's people here are pretty conservative in their in their beliefs as far as them doing out out of the ordinary jobs so most of the time you know i feel like life is kind of destined in long island like you go to school you go to college Mm -hmm. you know you get your degree after you get your degree you you get a job maybe a teacher or a nurse or something something in that field or if you're a man maybe you're a construction worker you join a union local three or something like that nothing wrong with any of this uh but 
but you know the the thing that's wrong is that when you're destined to become the next best rapper of all time like you're li- you literally have the talent and the the um potential to become the best rapper of all time but you took a job in local 3 because you 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 wanted you needed the money you needed yeah. the security and that's when life is short comes in and it's like you, at the end of your life you're regretting why didn't i yes. take control of my life and it's like we all have the power to take control of our lives yeah true hey, what does that what does that mean to you you ever live you only ever live the life you create for yourself that that hits me in my chest because doesn't it when i was in what was it ninth grade when i was in ninth grade i was a football player and i just i made a decision where i was talking to my friends and stuff like that and we said yo you want to be a basketball player. You're a football player now, but you want to be a basketball player. So what you have to do is you have to dedicate yourself to basketball. Yeah. I didn't really want to give up football. Yeah. I didn't. I'm not going to lie to you. I did. I, I enjoyed football. I didn't want to give that up. But I wanted, to, I wanted to hoop, man. I wanted to hoop. So I made that decision to give football up. Yeah. To focus on basketball. And and how much different of a life, like that path, that wasn't like a small decision, you know what I'm saying? Like because you decided to stop playing football, you that got you here, yeah. that choice. Your whole life would have been a whole type types of different choices. So what yeah. if you can identify that every single choice that you make leads to some type of outcome? And the outcome could be good or it could be bad. So what if you just made better choices? No, 100%. 100%. You, ever, you ever seen that Black Mirror movie? Uh, the, the show Bandersnatch but no. they, they made a movie yeah. oh they did watched no, it, right? I've never yeah. seen I've, so I haven't seen it you know it, it's a it's an interactive film where you can you choose what the person oh, goes really? like yeah. kind of like the first Final Destination movie okay it's where it's like every decision you make at, at the 20 minute mark in the yeah. movie it changes the outcome at the 2 hour how mark how did they make that yeah, man. Because bro, Black Mirror thinks on another level than than, than most of us. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, no, that's, and that's you gotta watch it. It's that's crazy. phenomenal. Yeah. So it's like you're choosing, and, and the beginning are such little decisions, yeah. minuscule decisions. What's your or, name? Go 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 to the office or or stay home. Don't go to work today. Right. And you watch the two. I watched them all. All the endings, bro. If you go to the office, the ending is is completely different than if wow. you would have stayed home that day wow. or but it like you said it bro these decisions albert's decision of choosing basketball over football yeah bro it changed his life yeah does it did it change his life for the better or the worse we don't know yet we don't but those decisions man these these small small decisions like i said i was a three-sport athlete right i went back i went the basketball route mm-hmm. you chose filmmaking over football yeah you know yeah who, Who knows? knows? <laughs> I could still be playing. I would exactly. just get. I would have had surgery and and exactly. done that whole it would game. Have, it would have been a different life. Yeah, you would have still been in that that grind method. But like you said, all these moments and all these decisions we make are, are is the path that we create for ourselves. Yeah, and you know, many people, many people, let those big time decisions like go by yeah. them, and they kind of let life just yeah, just just choose for them. Go through the motions. And I, I'm just gonna go with what's comfortable. Or I'm just gonna go yeah. with what 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 feels right at this moment. Yeah. But sometimes those moments that, man, those moments where it doesn't feel right, you know, sometimes those are those, you know, leaps you have to take, to take that next step in life. Yeah. Well, change know, is like, uncomfortable. Yeah. No. It's it, being like like we said the guy Dev we grew up watching, the sure. Dev in the lab, uh, ten thousand hours theory. I'm sure you're familiar with the 10,000 hour theory, right? Yeah. You got to, you know, do 10,000 hours to really master something. There's a guy that created on YouTube and he created his own uh, vlog system, I would say. Mm-hmm. And, bro, it, it was just, it's crazy because he always would talk about that. You know what I mean? Like, you got to, you got to go all in on something and, yes. and really take a chance and be uncomfortable. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah man. Being comfortable with being uncomfortable, that's the only that's the only way you're gonna grow. Yeah. It's only the way. only way you're gonna only grow. Way. And change is uncomfortable. A lot of the times the, the good the the growth, like you said, is is 
it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And it, 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 you need to do that. No, 100%, yeah. bro. Let me ask you a question again. What do you think, what, well, how much do you feel religion and God factors into the choices that you make? Great question. That's amazing. Religion and God factors into how, into the choices you make. That's a whole other podcast, bro. That's a th- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> you know what I'm uh, that's the craziest question ever. Uh, I, I think I think it's a huge part though, because everyone grows up different. Yeah. Everyone grows up different, man. You know what I mean? Like I believe in God, yeah. and uh, I try my best to be you know faithful and relig- You know what I mean? T- to the best of my ability, but I didn't grow up that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? There there could be people watching this you guys did grow up that way so god played a huge role Mm -hmm. did he play in you know i mean a life-changing role in mine no not yet i'm trying to get to that level where you know i really feel that you know i mean god is in control of mine but you i feel like you can't force it no you gotta find it that's something you don't force yeah Uh, that's something it'll it'll mess you up not gonna lie to you because my father like he was a big believer in like god is everything like every like literally you're driving a car as they say get, let god take the wheel that's yeah. literally what my dad believes yeah. and my parents believe like it should be yeah well that could be a very nice way to think i believe that to a certain extent mm-hmm. you know and i carry that with me in my life like when something bad happens i'm kind of like all right god what whatever you want whatever lesson you want to bring out of this sure i'm i'm, I'm good for it so yeah bro i'm a, i'm a huge i'm a big believer in that uh, but I have so many different theories about God and free will. And yeah, we, we don't want to get Jake yeah, started. Nah, so I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to get, we'd be here forever. Be but yeah, but, but that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very comfortable, it's, it's very comforting to, you know what I'm saying? If you could have a connection with God and then, cause life is shitty, you know? So if, if th- bad things happen, you can kind of be like, Hey man, God, let God take the wheel. It's yeah. very nice. No, I like that. Yeah. Let's jump into number three, man. Being busy does not mean being productive. And, and I like These are this. awesome. Yeah. I, are- I said this. I said this the other day. I think I, who was I talking to? I think I was talking to Gary last night. Uh-huh. And I was like, yeah, man, I haven't been doing shit, man. I've been so busy. And I was like, hold on. I was like, not busy. <laughs> I was like, yo. And, and you know, because I, I have these familiar on my mind. Uh-huh. And I've been thinking about these. Right. But it was like, yo. I was like, hold on. I was like, I, I don't even feel... Right, lying right. to one of like my best friends. <laughs> wow. Where I was I like, I was like, yo, I haven't been not saying that I've been really doing anything, but I've been doing stuff. If that yeah. makes sense, uh-huh. you know what I yeah. mean? Like, people think you know what I mean. Like, being busy means you're productive all the time, and, wow. you're, and you're getting stuff accomplished towards your life. And bro, that's not. Wow. Where if you work all day and then you go chill with your friends and then you, you know what I mean? At night you go out and get something to eat. Damn, I had a busy day. Busy as fuck. You didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do shit. Busy meter here, productivity meter. Exactly. <laughs> and so many people have that uh, that stigma where it's like, yeah, man, I'm so busy lately. I'm doing so much shit. Wow. You haven't done shit. You haven't done anything. Yeah. Think about those days where you're like, damn, I had a busy ass day. But I got nothing done towards my mission, towards my goal, towards what I yeah. want to do in life. I, I hate those days. Bro, I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. And I feel like I've been living that that regimented life recently at yeah. least where it's just like i'm doing this i'm doing this i'm doing this and then it's one in the morning and now i'm getting in bed yeah i didn't do sh- i didn't do anything <laughs> towards what i want to do yeah, yeah. well that's, so, what, I, that's yeah. what i was telling albert when, when when i walked in here when um you know i was talking about how i just full send everything mm-hmm. bro i i'm i'm wired that way i need to be productive busy is busy i despise busy i stay away from from busy Meaning, like, if if I know that I'm going to do something that's going to occupy my time, but it's not going to get me closer to where I have to go, I don't do it. I and I and I'm, I'm I tell people now, like, hey, I do not want to do that. You know, uh, whatever whatever the busy the busyness thing is. Um, yeah, no, I I. But that's why, like, you and I are we're actually pretty. We can be. It's a it's a blessing and a curse because it's it's beautiful because we're going to. That's that thing that makes us want to be productive is going to get us to where we have to go. But at the same time, it's going to uh, put some fire, light some fire on our ass all the time, and it, it's hard for me to relax because. I bro every single day I have to become a better filmmaker. Mm-hmm. I have to get closer to God. Mm-hmm. I have to um, expand my social media presence. I have to think about a new business idea. Get make get my heal my back. And it's like, 
it's like a lot of times some of the best growth happens when you do nothing sometimes like that is sometimes that moment of letting god take over is where the growth happens man i have a whole different perspective on that not gonna lie to you because me i'm the king of procrastination i will repeat it again the king king (laughs) jesus jesus Especially with school, I'll tell you this much. Yeah. I am I'm a physical education major at the SUNY College at Brockport. And I'm telling you, every assignment that needs to be done that is on Blackboard with a due date on it, I will look at the screen for hours. Not a word has been written. But yet somebody will hit me up and say, Yo, what's good? Nah, I'm busy. What the fuck have I done? Yeah. Nothing. I just think it's because you hate school. (laughs) (laughs) It could be a possibility. It could be a possibility, man. I'm not going to lie to you. The end result is there, but eh, maybe. Yeah. Possibility. Yeah. Bro, being being busy does not mean being productive. No. To to put it in a nutshell, you know what I mean? To put this whole topic in a nutshell, being busy does not mean you're being productive towards your craft, towards whatever you want to accomplish yeah being busy is is a uh, is an excuse for uh saying you're doing something it's like living someone else's life it's like you live a hundred years and you're busy all those hundred years it's like you never really did what, what you wanted to do no it's like what if you spend five years being productive like that's i'd rather take five years being productive than take a hundred years being busy and by being mi- busy i mean working for someone else working this nine to five and 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 you know having to i don't know just things that make people claim busyness over i'd rather take a small amount of productivity uh-huh bro i mean even like me and you one of our favorite rappers you know what i mean one of the quotes uh, J. Cole, when he said, you know, keep grinding, boy, your life could change in one year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Think about that. What if you put one year towards your craft? One year. One year can change your entire life. Yeah. And I, I see all, all my boys tweet that lyric and, and live by it, but, like, are you really living by yeah. it? Not many people do. I, I, I feel like I haven't yet. I'd yeah. be lying if I said I did. If I took one year and just full sent. On, on everything I wanted to do. No, I haven't yet. I need to. Let's do it. And maybe all three of we us should, should do, do it. That. Right, starting right now. Start, so we should do this podcast in a year from now. Absolutely. Do this podcast what, in a year date? from now. What's the date? What is the it? The 11th? Today is the... Check check the date, Lou. The 12th. The 12th. The 12th. December 12th, 2021. Yeah, us three will be... Maybe we won't even be here. Maybe we'll be in our own studio in... Uh, Shit. Yeah, I mean, wherever. I don't doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, let, let's hold ourselves accountable cool. to that and take one year from here on out. And and that and that's why, you know what I mean, like life is relatively short. Think about that. Think about how many years we've wasted so far. I feel like every single yeah. one we go down, it, it, it correlates with the other one. Mm-hmm. I feel like these are the years, too, that you don't want to waste. When you're growing up and you're, you're, you're all the way up to 17, maybe even 21 – you're given a structure. You have to go to school. You have to play a sport. Your mm-hmm. parents kind of pick things for you. 21, 22, 23. Around this area is when, like, yeah, you got to leave the nest. You got to make your own decisions. You got to have your own job. And now, like, all of the choices are they're on your plate, man. So, like, these are the years that you don't want to, to, to waste, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. Little pee break. Pee break. Back in the mix. People are probably like, why the fuck's he drinking chicken soup? (laughs) It's bone broth for my back. (laughs) When you have back problems, come to Jake. Mm -hmm. Put you in the right I got you. I got you. You Avoid the surgery table. (laughs) Yeah. Please. Yes. (laughs) Um, We're on number four. Some kind of failure always occurs before success. Yassi. This this one, man. I feel like this one can correlate with every single person watching this. Uh, every person on earth that has any type of success. Some kind of failure always occurs before success. Without a doubt, without a doubt, man. Think about some of the moments that all shit hit the fan before you started rolling in the right direction. I know Jake can, you know, 
attend to that yeah second hand like yeah i have i'm i'm the I'm, I'm i have a good example of that in my current life right now like it's like everything you worked for in your life failed yeah before you found your yeah. complete passion and life and life goal yeah i know i can at mm-hmm. least in the basketball sense where it's like i got hurt last year man three times yeah three times mm-hmm. and the year before that i got hurt and two years before that i got hurt and it was something that i i couldn't i couldn't control but these failures they lead you exactly to what your next step in life is yeah and you know like we said on our episode on episode six man i probably would have never got into podcasting unless i was hurt and in my bed and on my phone all day and saw your fucking story yeah and realize, whoa, this visual podcast thing is something that I could get into and I could touch on because yeah. I feel like I can relate so much to people. Because man, not not everything is so, uh, you know, like glitz and glamour where you know their story is so sweet yeah. and everything just falls the way you need it to fall. And bro, think think about just think about athletes from Long Island, man. In general, think about how much shit they have to go through. To really make it yes is there a few that that just Sweet, everything went right through by, yeah. and they went division one and yeah. went to the league absolutely yeah but a lot of us man we have similar stories yeah in our own in our own way but we have similar stories so what do you guys think about this one man where it's like you know failure has to come before success i wonder if anyone ever succeeded and didn't fail before you know, impossible. I don't think so. You don't think there's like one person out there that just had it easy this whole lot, their whole life. I don't know. But I feel like if you have it easy, like, yeah, you could have money. You could have that. But like, what are you going to do with the money? Like something has to happen for you to realize that I need to do something with this. Mm -hmm. Like it's not going to just stay here and it's going to be there forever. I have to do something with it. And that thing is, is failure. Yeah, I I I can attest to this mucho uh because that's hey man all all the most beautiful things I've ever done in my entire life have have required a an absolutely considerable amount of failure and I needed them. And then and then even the the major life changes was when the failure was so evident that I wasn't even able to keep going down that same path like football Bro, I wanted to go to the NFL so bad. I thought you were going. <laughs> I thought I was going to, man. <laughs> I wanted to go so bad. And then that was just stripped from me, right? Like ultimate failure. Back at square one. I had to come home, drop out of college, living in the same room with the same parents, except this time they're hounding me every day. What the fuck? One day I'm a Division One football player and my parents love me. The next day, what the fuck are you going to do, you know? Um and then that failure wasn't even a failure, man. That got me here. That got me here. And in, in the two in the two years, for anyone that doesn't know, in the two years since since that has happened, in the past six months, I started doing this filmmaking thing, and it's one of the very reasons why we get to share this this, this amazing experience together. And and, and not, not even for my own selfish thing. It's like one of the reasons why we can even do this right now, and people can see it the way that they're seeing it, is because I decided to to learn how to make uh, learn how to filmmake, and I got into this. And now, looking back. Uh, my life is fucking amazing. And it took failure. So for anyone in their own lives, for anyone listening, you need that failure. It's essential, man. It, it look look at failure, invite it. I started saying that like even the bad moments in my life, the moments that were dark and I was sitting down on the ground in fetal position and I was crying and, and I, I was going to the hospital and I didn't know what the fuck was wrong with me. It's like those were the fucking moments I needed. So I don't even know if I believe in bad things or failure anymore. It's like, no, just a part of the journey. Yeah. That's exactly why, you know what I mean, I made this podcast. Because for anyone that knows somewhat of my story, it has not been, you know what I mean, pretty. It hasn't been. And the journey, the journey just fits. It's so fitting because, bro, there's so many ups and downs during this road. And, you know what I mean? And I always look back at that, that, that one episode that, that you posted with Mike Studd and yep. Podson, uh, Modson. Modson. Mm-hmm. 
bro, it, it's crazy. Yeah. You, you think you're at this point in life, mm-hmm. right? You think you're 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 at the peak, but then you fall off and you hit you hit rock bottom. Yeah. And you and you think that uh, you think that that was the highest point, right? But you see this other avenue. Yeah. You see this other this other valley to yeah. get up higher, right? Mm-hmm. And you go through it. And it's a grind and you, and you go through it and you, and you get there and then you, you, you know what I mean? You look at the horizon, you look at everything and you look back, you're like, Oh wait, I was that, there. That, that's where I was at way down there. Yeah. And that's not even the bottom. You know what yeah. I mean? The bottom, you can't even see, <laughs> <laughs> you, you see that other peak yeah. and you're like, Oh, I had to fall. I had to fail. I had to get to right. where I'm at to get to this mountain peak and to get to this uh, point in life. Yeah. Bro, that's that's just a way to live by, man, because some people allow failure and their their mishaps to oh, send to them just on a spiral, destroy them. Spiral, yeah. And and when they when they fall, they fall yeah. in that crack. You know yeah. what I mean? Where where the earth splits and they just they just let life they let life take control. Yeah. And at every point, man, we have control of our lives. Yes, we do. We have complete one hundred percent control of our I'm fate in yeah. our lives. As bad as you have it growing up, as great as you have it going, yep. as grown up, you steer the ship. You know what I mean? You're you're the captain of your own of your own ship. Yeah. And uh, that's just something that that sticks with me to this day. Where it's like I feel like I'm gonna get to that point where it's like I thought I thought this was my peak. You know what right. I mean? Maybe, maybe in basketball, I thought you know this was as good as I'm gonna get. Yeah. Or you know, and this was gonna be my path. Yeah. Bro, I understand life. To, to say now people are like wow man like you excited to be filmmaking 20 years down the road i'm like 20 years down the road i mean i don't know I'm like, you know, I'm like i'm like oh man you found your your life purpose and shit and i'm like i found my purpose today yeah. but i don't know there might be a guitar a year from now on or some 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 of my i don't know something might happen where i lose interest in the camera and i guess to others it would have been a failure but that would that maybe that would lead me to the the, the newer the newer yeah. better road yeah. when's the last time you guys watched a movie and and there wasn't anything bad that happened in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, without conflict, there is no story. Yeah. There needs something bad, an arch nemesis, some like, experience, something, or breakup. Something has to make you the movie interesting. And nobody likes a movie that's the happy, even comedies. There's something, you know, Austin Powers, the Dr. Evil comes in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what makes a, a story, yeah. is conflict. Right. Everyone loves, everyone loves, you know, a Cinderella story. Everyone loves, uh, uh, a story where they're, you know, shit hit, shit hits rock bottom, yeah. and it's it's how do you respond to that, and how do you respond to those moments in life? Um, what's a what's a moment in your life? You know what I mean? Where where you felt like failure was a was a was a key part in something in your building in your building progress and your building uh, stages to life. Yeah, man. Like I said before, uh, I used to be a football player. And it so happened to be that our football coach was also the basketball coach. So he had a conversation with me while I was on the team and stuff and said, Claude, you're going to be our starter. You're going to be the starting running back and the starting cornerback. Good day. I'm I'm living. I'm like, all right, boom, I'm with it. But then I'm like, all my boys are going to basketball. And I do like basketball too. So let me go with let me Let me – let me see what's going on with that. I'm a good football player. I could do basketball. Yeah. Something like this, this is what I'm thinking in my Easy, head. Like, at, yeah, at nothing wrong. Years old, yeah. I could do it. Yeah. Went to that tryout. Guess what happened? You Claude, got cut. You are the 19th man, and we're only taking 15. Damn. I'm like, like what? Yeah. I worked my ass off for you on this field. I'm athletic as fuck. That's what I'm saying. I'm like what? <laughs> work my ass off on this field and now you're when I try and switch sports you're gonna tell me I'm not good enough yeah don't get me wrong I was absolutely horrible right, right, right. Right, right. Zach, I still no, can't it was bad <laughs> Zach, Zach helped me out it was pretty bad I'm not gonna lie I don't know where this yeah you guys were from, nice but... at ball I never had that <laughs> I would just go sit and get boards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, Jake, I would be nice Jake, now. I'd Jake, figure it out. Jake played. I'll never forget on the uh, <laughs> on the Saint Elizabeth fourth fourth <laughs> fourth grade team. 
And oh, uh, he was with Julian. He was oh, on no. Julian's team. Uh, yeah, 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 and it was me, Jordan, and uh, Ben Castillo. Oh, no. And uh, we, beat them. we beat them in Boys. the championship. Oh, man. Yeah. And, uh, but I remember Jake was on that team. We were the white team. They were the gold I, team. Do you I remember th- that? I think that game, I, dri- I dribbled backwards. I took the ball to the opposite <laughs> side of the court. Jesus. Bro, I was not. I did not. I was not athletic, bro. Yeah, no, I was not. I did not know how to Basketball, figure Basketball, yeah. But, you know, I could definitely attend to Albert's uh, choice. You know, and 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 I think on that time to time, like, damn, did did I persuade him in the in the right way? Did I, you know? Cause you were there for that, right? Cause I was there, you know, like ninth grade, like, cause I loved basketball. Ninth grade was the time I I I gave up baseball, I gave up football, and I was like, I'm gonna go all in on basketball. And that was the time, you know, me, Albert, Andrew, Chris, Nima, we were all, you know, great friends. Hoop life, man. Yeah. Shout out hoop life. That was our uh, our little uh, crew, HL, yeah. <laughs> and. uh you know, but but like you said, you know, that was a moment where, where you chose as a ninth grader, like, all right, I'm going to go all in on basketball. But at the end of the day, as much as I persuaded you or Andrew, you know, whoever our friends were, you did where your heart was. 100%. Man, you know, you, you loved football. You were good at football. You may have been better at football at the time. True. But your heart was with basketball. And that's another thing with this thing. You know, it says failure – you have to have failure before success, but you also have to go with what you love. And his heart was with basketball, you know. So maybe there, this wouldn't be the same Albert today if he would have stuck with football. Yeah. And these are these are minor minor decisions yeah. in life. We're talking about JV high school sports. Yeah, man. But but think about how much your life has changed going down the basketball route. Think about all the people you've met. Think mm-hmm. about you know you've met Lou. You know what I mean? You, you've been around, you know what I mean, these these basketball minds because you went down the basketball route. And, uh, you know, that, that failure of basketball, say, it, it wasn't a failure, you know? And like, like you said, like, like there may be no such thing as failures yeah. in life. These are just all learning points and all just stepping stones and, and pit stops to... Just some obstacles. Yeah. Like it's just, just a quick pit stop like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I do. Got to change the tires real quick. Change the tires, get the oil, the, the calibrate the system. I don't know. Yeah, do whatever they do. 100%. Because yeah. I, I don't think that's, you know what I mean, looking back, were those really failures? At the time, they were failures. But it yeah. felt like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt like yeah. it. It felt like it. It felt like the chest, man. And, and everyone From now on, you have a failure. Call me, bro. I'll let you know you're chilling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone that's had these, these quote-unquote failures – at the time, it feels like your world ended. Mm-hmm. It was the worst thing that could ever happen to you at those moments. Mm. But looking back, thank God, thank yeah. you for these moments because I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And think about the growth you've had as at 23 from 16, 15 at the time. Yeah, man. You're a different person. Hundred percent, different if, person, if, different if, athlete, it's everything. Yeah, not gonna lie to you. Because yeah. for me, like. Me failing and then knowing that my friends like made it, you made it, Andrew made it, especially my sophomore year, you made it, Andrew made it, Chris made it, Nima made it, and I'm the only one that didn't make it. So in my mind, I'm like, yo, I got to get on my shit. I'm bugging. I got to work and I got to make this team next year because if I don't, like, then I got to look myself in the mirror and really say, did I actually really want this or was this just a, a thought or maybe a wish? But you got to put, like, work into it. Yeah. Like, you can't just have a failure and then you're just looking at, oh, I failed. Or oh, maybe I'll try again or whatever. Try again. But when you try again, put that work in so you can be successful. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I like that so much because I, love that. I could put myself, like, like even right there, like, it put me back in that, in that time and point in life where it's like I felt bad almost like I felt almost responsible for some of those moments. Cause it was like, like I talked Albert into basketball. Cause like I saw his passion for it and like, I felt like I could really help him with it. And I was like, maybe I failed him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like maybe I failed him as like a friend, as like a person, you know, I couldn't get him to that, to that point where, you know what I mean? He was comfortable on the court and he, but bro, like, like he said, like all our friends, we was all on the same team. Yeah, and he, this dude was going to the park every day in mm-hmm. the winter. Mm-hmm. Basketball yeah, season's in the winter. Yeah, man. Pretty sure everyone knows that. Basketball season starts in November, ends in February, ends in March. Yep. This dude was at the park every day. 
Yeah. Shoveling the and and, and yeah, man, you guys were into the grind yeah. before before like I, I I even knew what that was. What was basketball? What was the NBA? Your your all end and 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 your probably not. Mm-mm. But were those moments at 16, 17, 18 years old shaping you to who you are to be today? Absolutely. And 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 like that says, like like the question you asked, you know what I mean, is God is God involved? And you know, how how much does God play a role? That shit happened to you for a reason. You were the only one that didn't make it that year mm-hmm. because the shit is going to shape you for another point in your life when 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 you don't get that job, when you don't when you don't get exactly where you want to be i've been here before i i've i've been at that point i see i've seen these people make it before now i'm gonna now i know what it takes and now i'm gonna go a little harder so bro it's these moments like we said like there's such small points in life yeah that mean at the time they mean a lot but looking back they could also mean nothing yeah but they do mean a lot there there's a reason they meant a lot to you you know and and at the time they meant a lot in different aspects yeah. if that makes sense mm-hmm. at that point in time basketball was the reason but now it's like oh no i have the work ethic now now i know i have to go a little bit harder than i did that time because i didn't make it mm-hmm. you know what i mean because i didn't get to where i i wanted to be where 100%. where i dreamed to be and like it goes second hand with you with with filmmaking bro think about your, your you posted your your first time vlogging right with you and femi yeah you posted the, your first yeah, time. Yeah, like last week. Yeah. Think about that, bro. When, when you first started doing this shit, I was like, oh, yeah, like, this shit is cool. Like, yeah. you're doing a YouTube <laughs> vlog. Like, that's what I thought yeah. the path you were taking. We yeah. had no idea. Yeah, it was a vlog. For day one, it was a vlog. Yeah. yeah. And and now and now you're making movies, bro. Yeah. Now you're making movies. Yeah. For like, like full blown, like I'm really trying to make a movie now. Like that's like my, that's the next thing that I'm trying wow. to do. Yeah. Like a real short film. That's why Think I need that. that's why I need Lou over there to fucking stop working his job and <laughs> hanging out with his girlfriend. Look at him. He was not thinking like this. This is what I mean, where there's a journey to life where stuff that happened and molded him molded him into who he is now. Like It's love, man. Yeah, man. It's love, bro. I appreciate that, man. Let's jump into number five because that one was huge. Because everyone, everyone can attend, you know, relate to failure, and obviously some type of success after that. But uh, let's jump into five. I like this one. Thinking and doing are two very, de- very different things. Let me say that again. I thinking and doing are two very different things. Thinking and doing. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking is the opposite of doing. <laughs> Man. I feel like I'm I'm uh, a victim of that a lot. Thinking and doing are two very different things. Yeah. I think about a lot of shit I want to do. Do I actually apply myself and yeah. do it? Yeah. Fuck. No. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like thought thinking too can be an enemy sometimes. Just because like our brains, the way that our brains think is that we're taught that life is a series of complex issues. Like, well, I mean, in school, like when you learn like arithmetic and math and algebra, your brain gets so used to having all these different theories inside its head and so many different types of problems to solve that over like overthinking is the thing that makes you not do anything. And our brains are are overthinking geniuses. We have top level A overthinkers inside of our inside of our heads um so the uh i read this book man and it was called who moved the cheese uh and it's like a super like a lot of a lot of people in business read it it's super easy read bro it's like 50 pages or something like that and it's about these mice um and like there's there's two groups of mice right um and in group a um the mice are like humans and in group b the mice are just mice. So in in the group A group, uh, they're both. So in both groups, they're put into this maze, and in the maze, the in the maze, there's cheese. So they try to figure out. In the 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 book says, how would humans go about finding the cheese, and how would the mice go about finding finding the cheese? So when they put the humans in this maze, the human mice, and I'm gonna butcher this a little bit because I read it a year ago. I don't really remember too much. But when they put the humans in this maze, 
the humans get in there and immediately they get on a whiteboard. They start, how, okay, who, who do we have here? What are your skills? What are your strengths? Then they go in the maze. They, they go out for a day. They come home. They take inventory of what they've learned. They go back into the maze. Like, bro, they're, they're overcomplicating finding this mm. cheese, right? It takes them years to find this cheese, bro, because they, they go in. And then once they finally find the cheese, they're like, we want to build a, um, we want to build settlements around this. We're going to, we're going to build our houses around the cheese and we're going to build cities around this cheese, right? And it's like, dude, the mice, they put the mice in there, group B, to go in and find the cheese. And all they do is they don't, they don't, what's your name? What is this? What is that? How are we going to do it? They just go get the cheese. On day one, they found the cheese. That's all they did. They didn't think. They just go got, they went and got the cheese. And then, uh, and then the next day, they didn't build houses around it. They just went and got more cheese. They kept going in the maze and finding the cheese. And it was like, it was like the thinking, the overdoing is what humans do. That's the difference between finding the cheese and then not finding the cheese. So that's think. So thinking is is would be just not finding the cheese, and then doing would be finding the cheese. So for me, in my everyday lifestyle, um, I I'm super big on doing. Like g- where where the body goes, the brain will follow. Some days I don't want to get out of bed, you know. And there's a million thoughts of reasons to stay in bed. Sometimes I don't want to film make. Sometimes I don't want. I don't want to um, help my parents take the trash out, but if I just get the, my body going, if I just start doing it, then it just creates this momentum. So I love I love doing overthinking. Yeah, one hundred percent, bro. One hundred percent. I mean, as far as like how I view that, I view that is like like thinking is something you do before you actually do something, but a lot of people do fall victim to this overthinking thing. Yeah. Where now it cripples them like I'm not even gonna do it because this could go wrong. Yeah. This could that could happen. This could happen. Yeah. That could happen. And I fall victim to that a good amount. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, that's something that I'm working on personally, where I gotta try and like shut my brain off and just say, "Yo, just do it. Let's do it. Just do it. Fuck it." It's the same. That's Nike's. It. Nike's one of Nike's the most best yeah. company most, in the world. Uh, Literally, just do uh, it. Nike. I need the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I need Biggest it. saying. Just do it. Just do it. Let's do it. I love that. Yeah, no, I, 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 I could not, I could not be uh, more of a fan because, bro, anytime anyone ever does something of, of, of amazingness, like, dude, one day I was in the car, right, and I stopped short. I hit, hit the, hit the brake, right? Like, there's someone in front of me who stopped, so I stopped short. I had a 12 pound speaker in the back of my car. Speaker comes flying, about to crack the windshield. Bam, stuck it. How'd I do that? I didn't think about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, it's just... Dude, Jake is Superman. Holy bro, shit. <laughs> no, but we're, no, but we're all Superman. Bro, when, when Michael Jordan's in the finals, you know what I'm saying? He's not, he's not like thinking about stuff. He's just playing. You know what I'm saying? Anytime anyone... That's a flow state. Anyone, anytime anyone ever does something of great significance, they're not fucking thinking. They've, they've done their thinking. They've done prep before, you know, prep, whatever. But yeah. once you're at, you're at the game, fucking do that shit. 100%, bro. 